Hi everyone, I'm Callie. Welcome back into the channel. Today we're going to be playing another episode of Mass Effect 3. Last episode was everything and more that I thought would be the intro of another amazing Mass Effect game. I was just absolutely blown away. The opener was solemn, the music was amazing. It uh, feels kind of like the beginning of the end for everything. We have been hanging out with Ashley and also Liara and someone else named James. So those have been the three people we have been running around with in the very beginning of Mass Effect 3. Also Captain Anderson, who I don't know if he's gonna be okay. We left him back on Earth in turmoil. It didn't seem like a very good situation at all. I wish that we could have stayed by and helped him fight off some of the Reapers, at least a little bit, and then he would come back on board with us, but he was ready to go fight alongside of his crew. And honestly, it is a very noble thing for him to do, but I just feel like he, he can't walk away from that one alive. Not after what we saw as we were departing to go head out to Mars and I'm just, I'm nervous that Captain Anderson, we're going to get a message or something that tells us he is no longer with us because of how we left him and the state that we left him in. So we went to Mars, we found Liara, which was awesome. I explained all of my feelings in that last video. I think it's really great that we're back with her and hanging out with her as if she's part of our squad. I'm not sure what the rest of this game has in store for us with her, but I am excited that right away in Mass Effect 3, it kind of felt like home when we ran into Liara. It felt like, it just, it felt like home. I'm excited to get to talk to her more. Hopefully there's more dialogue right away. We do have to go and sit in front of the council in the Citadel where we're currently stationed. Ashley is also in the hospital right now because that crazy robot lady that Cerberus sicked on us really caused her a lot of critical injuries. We're gonna go check on her and walk around the Citadel a bit today. And I am very excited to see how the Citadel looks in Mass Effect 3. Hopefully Ashley is hanging in there and go see what the heck the council has to say to us about everything that has been going on. If I had to imagine, it's probably not gonna go very well, especially with our past with the council. But hopefully now that everything has kind of come to fruition, everyone will believe Shepard and stand by our side for the first time, figure out how we can stop this chaos. Today's stream is also brought to you by Starbucks, our super amazing sponsor. Oh, I'm just kidding. I wish that Starbucks would sponsor us. I don't even know if Starbucks sponsors like YouTube streamers. I don't think I've ever seen someone sponsored by Starbucks. So just as a quick note, um, I don't think I mentioned it last time in my closing because there was so much going on in that first episode of Mass Effect 3. We ran into the elusive man back on Mars. The robot lady came from him, destroyed some of the data, but we still were able to salvage some of it. Liar was able to get some of the data needed to destroy the Reapers. And it's apparently some machine, which it's hard to believe that a one singular machine can destroy all of the Reaper ships that we have been seeing and witnessing and that have been causing mass destruction everywhere. But I know that Liara is very capable. And if she says that it will work, I believe her that it will work. Really, it's our only hope right now. But the elusive man wanted to destroy this data. He thinks that there is a way that we can use the Prothean archives to destroy the Reapers slash take over the Reapers and start to control humanity through the elusive man. And I think that this is an awful idea. I knew that he was up to something since the first moment we met him in Mass Effect 2. I think he was probably thinking that if he saved Shepard, that we would be on his side and help him with this ultimate plan of just mass takeover. But to his surprise, we have not gone along with his plan. I am not surprised that the elusive man has had this crazy information tucked down deep in his pocket about what his ultimate goal was for the Reapers, but I'm excited to pull one over on him now and see what we can do 
with a little amount of time and a little amount of information. I have been super ready to hop back in. I can't wait. We're going to start off right in the Citadel. We're going to read through some codexes before we get into any sort of exploring. So without further ado, let's go. A lot of these are duplicates from Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2, but there were a couple that I thought that we could touch on here coming in now. We have like a known associates tab, and I don't think that we have had that previously. I think it's really cool that everyone in here is in the known associates. That's actually really, I think that's a new tab. I could be wrong, but I noticed that one. And I also want to touch on the Reapers and... I do like looking through the Emmy timeline when I first start out in the Emmy games. So 2183 was when everything happened with Saren. And when we got ambushed, the SSV Normandy went down and we were presumed dead. Two years later, um, when we were brought back from Cerberus, it says in 85, and alien race known as the collectors abducted thousands of human colonists in the terminus systems commander shepherd leads a team beyond the omega-4 relay to attack the collectors where they live stopping the abductions and not even probably a year later is when they just start the reapers started to take over and came into the system they're doing everything that they're doing now so i just thought it was interesting that not even three years later since the start of everything that happened with the Reapers. And it just, it's so fast moving. It's, it's crazy. All right, so let's go ahead and read about the Reapers since we're talking about them. The Reaper called Harbinger is believed to be the oldest and largest in the Reaper Armada. From the reaches of dark space, Harbinger managed to control the Collectors, a race of human-sized insectoid bipeds, as it sent them on a campaign to kill and gather humans from vulnerable colonies. The Collectors became a terrifying force in the galaxy, responsible for the murder of hundreds of thousands. Surviving colonists have described the tone of Harbinger's threats heard through the Collectors as they attacked as visceral and terrifying. Alliance Intelligence has tentatively identified Harbinger as one of the Reapers leading the attack on Earth. Yeah, so it wasn't even the Collectors. And a really sad moment in the end of Mass Effect 2, when the collector is like holding on to the control panel and you hear Harbinger like releasing control and you start to see like the collector look behind and just kind of accept their fate. And it was such a like chilling, sad moment. I don't think I ever talked about it because there was a lot of other stuff to talk about in the end of Mass Effect 2. Um, I know that I commented on a couple of you guys about how it was really sad to watch them be controlled. And then once that control was lifted to realize what was actually happening and what was going on, it's just, it's really, really sad. And it was a very touching moment of the collector just kind of like holding on to the console and accepting the end. It was very, it was very moving. Man, hearing again everything about Saren, the Sovereign, all that stuff it makes me really excited to go back for another playthrough off screen and everything that I know now. I don't know. I'm just I'm really looking forward to the replay of this game. I've written down so many notes in my journal about decisions that I would like to try out or decisions that I made that I would just like to see differently. So I'm very, very excited. And just like going through and, and reiterating all of this stuff and how amazing my time in this game has been so far. It's just bringing back some good memories. Cannibals are frontline Reaper units created from corrupted batarians. <gasps> the nickname refers to their propensity to devour the bodies of fallen comrades. I see it now. This triggers a biochemical process through which the cannibals spontaneously heal themselves and grow new chitinous armor. Mm. The transformation also appears to give cannibals a greater awareness of their surroundings, leading to more strategic behavior and careful use of battlefield cover. That's crazy. I see the Batarian resemblance now. I can't believe I didn't put that together before. I think it's because I hate zombies and just like looking at them, just, well, I just don't really love any sort of zombies i have recurring nightmares of zombie apocalypses the reapers use large groups of husks to overwhelm the enemy 
So this is kind of funny, but I just heard it. I've heard it several times before. I've never said anything about it. The way he says overwhelm or like it reminds me of family guy. Wheat thins, wheat thins, wheat thins. Why are you putting so much emphasis on the H? What are you talking about? I'm just saying wheat thins. It made me laugh. I had to start with you guys. Anyways. Admiral David Edward Anderson is a career military officer in the Systems Alliance Navy. Born in London in 2137, he later moved to Arcturus Station and became the first graduate of the Alliance's now renowned N7 Marine program. Anderson is one of the Alliance's most decorated Special Forces operatives and served with honor during the First Contact War. He was the original captain of the SSV Normandy before relinquishing command to his XO, Commander Shepard. After the Alliance victory in the Battle of the Citadel, Anderson briefly served as the Citadel's first human counselor. He soon became embroiled in a Cerberus plot to abduct his friend Kaylee Sanders, however, and learned that he was unable to live a life without action. He stepped down as counselor and returned to the military to prepare for the Reaper invasion. The Alliance Parliament named Donald Udina as his successor. Did we know that? He became embroiled in a Cerberus plot to abduct his friend Kaylee Sanders. What? Did we? Was there like a side quest for that or something? I feel like I don't remember any of that. Before she became involved in galactic affairs, Dr. Tassoni spent 50 years researching the Protheans' technology and the mystery of their extinction. She now divides her time between uncovering Prothean ruins and consulting with noteworthy representatives of the various Citadel races. Yeah, she has a pretty extensive history with Prothean ruins. That's why I believe her when she says that this one tool, I don't even know how it's going to happen or what the logistics are behind it. Dr. Liara obviously knows. Um, but I believe her. I, she's been studying this for so long um, about Prothean technology and all that stuff. So I believe her when she says that she thinks that she can use this technology to destroy the Reapers. Um, and I will hold her hand through the end of that. I mean, we don't really have another choice. We don't have any other options right now. I just... I hope that all of her years of research come to come to light and she can actually take out the Reapers with this tool. Flight Lieutenant That's also Jeff, a really Dr. good picture Leonardo of her. Tassoni, Flight Lieutenant Jeff Joker Moreau is oh, wow. a respected pilot that does not look like him. the Alliance Navy. Born and raised on Arcturus Station, he is widely considered to be the best helmsman in the Systems Alliance. What did they do to him? Moreau what does enlisted eyes look with like the that? Navy directly out of school and quickly gained the respect of his superiors. He served as pilot of both the Normandy SR-1 and its successor, the SR-2, and was at their respective helms during the Battle of the Citadel and the assault on the Collectors. Moreau suffers from Vrolic Syndrome a rare debilitating disorder also known as brittle bone disease. Joker's awesome. I'm excited that we've already had a conversation with him um, aboard the Normandy, so he's still flying it. That does not look like him, though. His eyes look very strange. <laughs> Maybe it's just a bad angle. Uh, mm, okay, it was just in the codex. So there's Cerberus Centurion, Cerberus Guardian, and Cerberus Trooper. And we took the mask off of one of the Cerberus troopers and saw what was going on with them. They have been, as Tim likes to say, upgrading them. So I don't know what the heck he's doing or what his ultimate plan is besides obviously mass uh, takeover of everybody in the entire system. But it's pretty creepy. So Cerberus Centurion. Centurions are also are Cerberus' frontline tacticians. They are meant to enact the elusive man's strategic goals, although it is clear that they have leeway to adapt as an encounter develops. The only useful intelligence that the Alliance has gathered on Centurions relates to their armament. Each Centurion carries an M96 Maddox heavy rifle modif modified to launch smoke grenades. Ah, oh, that's why it was so smoky in that one area. Uh, leaving enemies vulnerable to crossfire. Yeah, it definitely made it much more difficult to find targets in that. I was wondering why it was so smoky. <laughs> I do notice that they're using a lot more grenades and a lot more, um, like, I guess, smoke grenades. But definitely noticed the uptick in use of throwables. 
uh, guardians, the, the Cerberus equivalent of human tanks, are slow-moving soldiers who carry enormous polycrystalline composite shields. Uh, the, yeah, like juggernaut type things. The weight of the shield requires an armored suit equipped with hydraulic assists and a dedicated power supply. Combining this exceptional protection with a suite of environment mapping system, Guardians focus on flanking opponents to flush them from cover. A Guardian's slow but relentless approach is intended to demoralize enemies as well as draw their fire, but rip away their shields and Guardians become little more than cannon fodder, which is very true. When we were using Liara's um, ability to kind of like yeet people into the sky, once they were away from their shield, they were like, they were just mashed potatoes. But yeah, there's... They're gaining an army. They're making an army. So troopers. Assault troopers are the backbone of Cerberus forces. Those candidates who make it through the grueling basic training are submitted to an intensive psychological program that renders them fearless, disciplined, and unrelenting. Outfitted with custom-designed armor and rifles, these soldiers function with determined precision and practice teamwork. The first to rush into fight... Assault troopers often work in tandem with more powerful units. They make strategic use of this scenario, keeping their opponents occupied until it is too late to react to the combined Cerberus force bearing down on them. Man, I wish that he would have taken us up on the offer to work with us because we're really, we have our backs against the wall here. And without the elusive man's money and his time, I just, I worry about how we're going to get through this, how we're going to make that new Prothean tool that we found. Just, I have questions about it. And now to find out that he's making this crazy army, it's just, it's very suspicious. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're doing here. Um, so we have priority the Citadel. The Council must be informed of the Reaper threat and the Prothean device that may be able to stop the Reapers. Go to Counselor Udina's office on the Citadel and convince the Council to send help for the fight against the Reapers. So they have been in a meeting, I think. They're like in a meeting currently. Um, Captain Bailey, well, I guess now Commander Bailey, told us that we can go walk around for a little bit, go check on Ashley before we meet with them. So I'm going to take him up on that offer and kind of do some like walking around. Oh my God. They look so much more real. It's kind of like creeping me out. <laughs> now that I know what I know about the creep, uh, about the the creepers, about the keepers. I saw it, Doc. Was last seen on Earth. Did Commander Shepard escape? She did, didn't she? So why would she be here unless she's seeing the Council? Ma'am, I can't talk about that. You don't have to, Commander Shepard. Oh, she knows I'm here, Diana Allers. Is this another one of those? What's going on here? Commander, just Not who order. I was looking for. Diana Allers, Alliance News Network. I think we can help each other. I suppose you want an interview? Even better. I'm a military reporter with a show called Battle Space. We're carried on just about all council planets. My producers want me embedded on a human ship, and I want that ship to be the Normandy. Why would I want that? Wars can be won or lost in the editing room. And this war needs to be won. I've got Alliance security clearance and operate without a crew. You get veto power over the segments I file. Can you handle an arrangement like that? Or do I keep looking? Um, I guess we could do a trial run. Oh, these reporters. I think we've punched one of them in the face before. Let's just do, let's do a trial run. Okay. Tell your producers yes for now. We'll see how it works out. Report to the ship as soon as possible. Any questions? How much gear can I bring? One footlocker. Aye, aye, Commander. Interesting. Okay. Um, so we got another Codex update. Alliance News Network. Man, we're always running into the these news network people. Founded during the early decades of human space expansion, the Alliance News Network was originally a low-profile news organization, known mostly for a series of exposés on the first contact war. 
With a focus on galaxy-wide reporting, the ANN opened bureaus on planets across known space, winning a few awards for excellence and earning a multi-species audience. The Alliance News Network has never been funded by the Systems Alliance, despite what its name might imply. This led to regular confusion among those who who are not in the know, although the network's recent high-profile sale to a media conglomerate made the ownership structure clearer. Recent high-profile sale to a media conglomerate. I'm regretting the decision to let her on board now. The new management has opted for a more sensational approach. This is particularly obvious from changes to its roster of reporters, with a few of the network's luminaries retiring or joining other news organizations. The network's increasingly uh, lurid programming has gained wide attention as well as sorely needed ratings, all the proof that management needed to validate its course. Nonetheless, ANN insists that integrity and credibility are invaluable um, standards in the newsroom. Battlespace is among ANN's highest rated programs, known for a particularly titillating, titillating breed of reporting. Among the show's most noteworthy segments are Diana Alder's dispatches from the front lines. The network calls her reports gritty and realistic, but she has been criticized for her unabashed focus on the violence of war. Even critics of, critics of Alder's agree, however, that despite her often graphic visuals, the facts she reports are just that, facts. All right. Well, I am kind of not regretting it as much now. I'm a little bit nervous about who this ho high profile media conglomerate guy is that um, apparently bought them out or something. But I do like that she's reporting on actual news. It's pretty interesting. War asset acquired. What the heck does that mean? War Acid Acquired. Um, okay. Man, this is crazy. All right, so what's over this way? Is that just how to get onto the Normandy, I think? This is the council before leaving. Okay, so that's how we get back to the Normandy. Hello, Commander Shepard. Welcome to the Citadel. This is Docking Bay D-24. Note that due to recent events, official identification and weapons permits may be requested by CSEC personnel for routine verification. Yeah, it's been like that for a while. Any other important areas I should know about? Docking Bay E-24 has been repurposed into temporary housing to accommodate the recent influx of civilians to the Citadel. Oh, wow. If you wish to contact your species' official Citadel representative, please go to Citadel Embassies. For medical needs, the Presidium offers leading-edge care at the Huerta Memorial Hospital. The Presidium Commons has been a cultural mainstay since the Council was first established at the Citadel. Okay. What's with the heightened security? New screening fields have been added in order to speed up processing at the security stations in each docking area. Citadel security screening technology uses highly advanced biometric authentication systems developed by the CERTA Foundation. Please note that any attempt to circumvent Citadel security measures will result in immediate incarceration. The CERTA Foundation. Okay. What else is in the area? You are standing in docking area D-24. According to your biometrics file, you are cleared to access further information about this bay. This is the airlock currently assigned to the Systems Alliance ship Normandy. If you look out the bay window, you can see one of the many magnificent vistas for which the Citadel is renowned. What about that room over there? The waiting area is for those who wish to speak to our new arrivals. It is located next to security processing. All right. That's all. Please speak with me again if you require further assistance. Interesting. They still called our Normandy... Um an alliance vessel but is it all right so let's go ahead and go through here hello 
Okay. Thought someone was gonna talk to me. I guess I'm clear. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Ooh, it's an Please elevator. The destination. And it knows me. Um, yeah, let's go to the Memorial Hospital One first. Moment. Oh, we don't get like a cool like now arriving at Puerta Memorial Hospital. In the uh elevator, the the crazy music that was an Emmy one. I was kinda of looking forward to it. I was like, oh an elevator. Wow, this place is awesome. Look at this. Oh, this is amazing. It reminds me of New Babbage from Star Citizen. <gasps> Look at this. To bathe and you only want to talk to another Asari. Yes. Can I have a gun? I'm sorry. No. Maybe I could be transferred to another hospital then. Someplace unsecured. I could have a gun there, right? And no humans. And wherever you transfer me, it, it, it shouldn't have humans. The humans are our allies. You don't trust them? No, it's not that. I... How are my eyes? What, what, what color are they right now? Maybe you could tell me what happened. Strange. I mean, we are outside of a hospital. Maybe she's like an outpatient or an inpatient or something like that. Interesting. She seems very like schizophrenic or something. She's like very concerned about humans and their eyes. What's this? Serta supplies? <gasps> Whoa, look! How much money do we have? We have 35,000. is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the medical needs of all sapient life. Serta owns everything. Are these actual books? Thank you for coming to Serta. How can we help you? All right, well, let's definitely get this metagel capacity increase. I'm not sure what we can do with all flowers. Go to help new medical research. And candies? Interesting. Rumi has Thank remembrance. You for coming to the works of Rumi, a 13th century earth poet, have been continuously in print since the 20th century. This edition of his poems was created research. a few years ago to mark the 900th anniversary of his death. Wow. Serta is a nonprofit organization dedicated to the medical needs of all, right. all sapient life. For now, I'm just going to buy the flowers because I don't want to spend too much money. organization dedicated to the medical needs of all sapient life. But maybe we can put him on the Normandy or something. <gasps> it's Dr. Chakwas! Shepard, there you are. Dr. Chakwas, you're here? I'm working at an Alliance R&D lab down in Shelter Wards, coordinating closely with Admiral Hackett. I heard you escaped Earth in the Normandy and that someone was critically injured. I came as fast as I could. We had a run-in with the Cerberus synthetic on Mars. Ashley took the worst of it. How is she doing? Very well, all things considered. I'm impressed with Lieutenant Commander Williams' resilience, as well as Dr. Michelle's expertise. I wish I could have been there to help on Mars. Oh, what have you been up to? It's been six months, Doctor. How have you been? Good. I've been fortunate. When they impounded Normandy, the Alliance didn't really know what to do with me. I was never officially part of Cerberus, and I'd gotten a proper leave of absence from my previous post. So you hadn't technically done anything wrong by joining me to defeat the Collectors? Yes, though I suppose if you were judged to be a war criminal, I would have been tried as an accessory. <laughs> you belong in the Normandy. I hope that she comes back. Your place is in Normandy's med bay, not some lab. I couldn't agree more. You say the word and I'm with you. Yes, most definitely. The Normandy wouldn't be the same without you, Doctor. Get your things. Docking bay D24. Yes, Commander. Oh, I just got goosebumps. I know that's silly, but... Don't thank me so soon. Remember, Joker's still aboard. And I'd be surprised if he's been remembering his medication. Mm -hmm. I think I have a special place in my heart for Dr. Chakwas because I come from the medical field. <laughs> and just like having that conversation with her in ME1 and also like sitting down and having a bottle of wine with her in ME2 when I thought that our entire crew was gone and nobody really was. Dr. Chakwas and Joker were like the two that I felt like, okay, 
I can get, I can do this. I can make it in this game because we lost everyone. We lost Rex. He was doing his own thing. We lost everybody else. It was just like starting fresh. And Dr. Chakwas and Jeff were like the two people that helped me feel like it was still the Normandy and I'm still Shepard. And I think I'm just, I've grown an attachment to Dr. Chakwas. Whoa. Patient stable for now. That's touch and go. Good work, Dr. Freilich. Oh, Dr. Freilich. Still the best course of action. I'll see if we have the required stracial bindings. Oh, he sounded like Morden. I was thinking that maybe it was Morden. <laughs> it was not Morden. I wonder if Morden is in here. I mean, Dr. Chakwas was here. Okay, so what are these? Just like labs and stuff? This is a beautiful hospital. Can I take the meds? No. I guess we shouldn't steal from the hospital, huh? All right, let's just check the rooms. See if we can find Ashley in one of them. All right, that looks like it connected there. Well, we need to prescribe you another round of antibiotics. For when I ship out? I have some bad news. Your squad applied the Medigel correctly, but infection had already set in by the time they found you. I'm sorry. I'm afraid we have to remove your leg below the knee. What? I, I, I don't understand it. It doesn't even hurt. It would if we took you off the painkillers, Lieutenant. Oh, that's so sad. What are they saying about me? Commander Shepard and something about theoretical? What the heck? Is that Ashley? There she is. Oh man, she looks horrible. You got pretty banged up there, Williams. Made me worried. I just wanted to check in on you. See how you're doing. I'm thinking about you. Despite all this, it's good seeing you again, Ash. Get some rest, okay? I'll come by when you're feeling better. We'll talk. You need anything, Doc, let me know. Okay, Ash. You take care. I'll see you soon. Oh, the music in this game. My goodness. I hope that she's going to be okay. I'm just glad that she's alive. I just hope that she actually wakes up. All right. I think we've looked at everything that we can in the hospital. So let's go out and go to the embassy now. I think that's our next stop. I can't get over how like beautiful, like the lighting, it's just, it's so good compared to the other games. It's, it's really, really, really amazing. Welcome, Commander Shepard. Please one come moment, in. please. Okay, so to the embassies. Now arriving at Presidium Embassy. All right, let's see what Avina has to say. Hello, Commander Shepard. Welcome to Citadel Embassies. The current human ambassador is Dominic Osova. Commander Bailey is the CSEC officer on duty. You will find him in the Citadel Security District Office. Wow, he got a nice upgrade. What else is in the area? This area is reserved for human embassy personnel and attending CSEC security. Okay. The human embassy prides itself on offering swift assistance to any who fall under its auspices. That's it. Thanks. Please speak with me again if you require further assistance. 
Okay. Early reports indicate that Earth has fallen to the same enemy force. Uh, look at this poster. <laughs> Hack it! Alliance, join the fight. That's a great poster. We need to get on him about that one. All right, so I don't really know where I'm supposed to go. I'm just kind of glued to the posters right now. Do you have a career waiting in eternal affairs? <laughs> C-Sec. All right. I don't think I can go in any of these places. I'm just kind of seeing if I can talk to anyone. We had a journal update. A Volus diplomat needs a Prothean obelisk. Recover it from the Shrike Abyssal and return it to him at the Citadel embassies. What? When did we even hear about that? Was it them? Who kicked that off? I didn't even think I heard anyone talking over here. Okay, maybe I was busy in my head. Okay. I'm not really sure where I should be going. I guess up here. All right. Commander Bailey. Let's see him first. There is no anti-humanity conspiracy here, Ms. Al-Jalani. The Council's simply not granting interviews at this time. My viewers are going to know that CSEC and the Council are denying them access. Listen, lady, you think I like playing gatekeeper between the paparazzi and the politicians? I don't have time to babysit them, and I'm not here to hold your hand. <laughs> well, I'm camping out until I'm granted an audience. Fine. I hope you brought a sleeping bag. <laughs> I think that's the lady that we punched. Commander Shepard? Commander, humanity has questions. Okay. Damn press. <laughs> See, you're keeping the peace. Yeah, I feel like a glorified doorman. <laughs> Most people would see it as a move up. Wedged in here with all the stuffed shirts? I'd rather be back down on the streets. I appreciate the higher pay grade, but I'm not a political creature. So why'd you take the job? If you didn't want to be up, why'd you accept? <laughs> you don't say no to Councillor Udina. Well, maybe you would, but I gotta live <laughs> here. I know, squeaky wheel gets the oil, but I didn't lobby for a promotion like some other officers. I'm not even sure why he picked me. I never know with politicians. I hate political BS. Mm. Me and you both. It's a stupid game. Politicians are the weeds of the galaxy. <laughs> If that was a bumper sticker, I'd stick it right here on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> it's killing me about Earth. You and me both. I haven't been back in years. Now I may never. If this ain't the end of days, it's pretty damn close. Yeah, feels like it. Definitely feels like it. You have a nice office, Bailey. He's really moved up for himself. Okay. Oh, look, it's Udina. I just want to go look around the corner real quick before we embark on this next conversation. <sighs> His first name's Donald. Did I know that? Commander, Councillor Udina said you'd be coming. If you'll follow me, the council is already in session. Okay. Councillor, the troopers are in our space as well. Earth is no more or less important than any council homeworld. But Earth was the first council world hit. By all reports, it faces the brunt of the attack. How do you know this is the brunt? New Reaper fronts are opening up everywhere. The reports are accurate. Earth was attacked. A full-scale invasion. And it's just the beginning. We need your help. Everything you can spare. Earth may be suffering, but our worlds are falling too. The Turians have lost Tetris. We must fight this enemy together. Need I remind you that the last time we fought the Reapers, Shepard sacrificed the Council to protect human interests. True, but in the end we survived because we followed Shepard's lead. And 
what if that's not enough this time? The reports are dire. If we throw everything we have at the Reapers on Earth and lose, what then? I don't expect you to follow me without a plan. Counselors, we have that plan. A blueprint, created by the Protheans during their war with the Reapers. Prothean? What is it exactly? We're still piecing it together. But it appears to be a weapon of some sort. And this is capable of destroying the Reapers? So it would seem. It's immense, and intricate. This is a fool's errand. The Protheans were wiped out by the Reapers. Clearly, the weapon is flawed. It was incomplete. There was a missing component, here. Something referred to only as the Catalyst. But they ran out of time before they could finish building it. Do you believe in this, Shepard? After what you've seen of the Reapers? I believe in trying, yeah. Liara believes it can work, and so do I. And while I haven't always agreed with Udina, he's right about this. We need to stand together, now more than ever. The Reapers won't stop it, Earth. They'll destroy every organic being in the galaxy if we don't find a way to stop them. The Council cannot give Earth the military support it needs. Our own planets must come first. The Salarian Union is convening a summit amongst our species. If we can secure our own borders, we may be able to aid you. Our fleets are also engaged. Honesty is all I can offer, Commander. I will not make a promise of rescue that I cannot keep. But Earth is crumbling. Shepherd, meet me in my office. This is ridiculous. I hope that's an offer of support. I'll be digging up what I can on this Prothean device, Shepard. They're a bunch of self-concerned jackasses, Shepard. Wow, we agree on something. We may have a spot on the Council, but humanity will always be considered second-rate. How can they be so blind? Commander, I can't give you what you're asking for, but I can tell you how to get it. I'm listening. Palavin's Primarch Fedorian is the one that called the War Summit. He's your kind of man, open to extreme solutions. Trouble is, he didn't get out of Palavin's system when the Reapers attacked. We don't know if he's alive. He's essential to the summit. If the Normandy could extract him without being detected... Hmm... So favors for favors. You want me to rescue his ass in the hopes he considers helping Earth? Put bluntly, yes. I shouldn't even be telling you about it. But we need Fedorian alive, and your ship can get him. Save the Primarch, gain an ally. One with the power to grant you what you're looking for. While the Reapers mm -hmm. ravage Earth. Your counselor was right. We need to work together. This is the best way to get that. <laughs> Our intel says Primarch Fedorian is on Palavin's largest moon. Get in and out undetected, and he'll take care of the rest. Good luck, Commander. You're gonna need it. Well, it's something. He didn't have to give us that information. There is one other thing. The Council has agreed to reinstate your Spectre status. And there are certain resources that will be made available to you. Good luck. Resource. Well, that went well. <laughs> it's a start. I'll talk to the others in the meantime. See if we can support this summit. Move things along. Thanks. What a wild career we've had. We have had such a wild up and down career. <laughs> like, we have been reinstated twice now. We have been, like, hit on the wrist more times than I can even count anymore. This is crazy. So uh, he wants us to go rescue Palavin. Wait, wait, no, that's the area. What was the guy's name? Um, Primarch Fedorian of the Turian hierarchy has called a war summit that presents an opportunity for the Alliance to request help building the crucible. The crucible, what is that? Unfortunately, Fedorian was caught in the Reaper attack on Palavin. Fedorian, that's his name. Rescue the Turian Primarch from Palavin's moon. Okay. We had a bunch of codexes pop up as well. 
Admiral Stephen Hackett is a Dr. Chakwas. Dr. Karen Chakwas is a trauma surgeon and a major in the Alliance Navy. She served on the SSV Normandy under both Captain Anderson and Commander Shepard, and was aboard the ship when it was destroyed by the Collectors. She later quit the Alliance in order to rejoin Shepard on the Cerberus-built Normandy SR-2. Along with most of the second Normandy's crew, Dr. Chakwas was kidnapped by the Collectors and taken beyond the Omega-4 relay, where Commander Shepard eventually rescued her. After the Alliance impounded the Normandy SR-2, an inquiry found that Dr. Chakwas had no significant role in or provable knowledge of Cerberus's criminal activities. She has since rejoined the Alliance. Nice. And now she's back on board the Normandy too. When humanity, when humanity won a position on the Council for its part in defending the Citadel, the Alliance chose Captain David Anderson for the position. Udina became his advisor. Anderson eventually quit over frustrations with Council politics, and the Alliance named Udina to the office. Despite his unwavering focus on human interests, Counselor Udina is usually willing to collaborate with other species. Even his opponents concede that Odina gives fair consideration to non-human proposals, so long as humanity also benefits. Maybe we should have made him counselor to begin with. I had some qualms with Odina um, back in ME1, the end of ME1. That's why I named Anderson as the new counselor mem council member. Um, but having seen that Anderson was so negatively affected by his time as a counselor i probably wouldn't have given him that role i think it was more stress for him than necessary and udina is way more actually cut out for that position and by the looks of things he's been handling it pretty well so i think that in my notebook of like replayability i would definitely not give that role to anderson i respect the heck out of anderson i feel like that role just did not fit him very well unfortunately he's just he's too stressed out like he stresses out about everything and eventually that was his undoing too because he was stressed out about the council politics and every time that we talked to him he was just like Oh, I'm just just another day in the office like he was just he was so unhappy in his role so I wouldn't bestow that position on him again I feel kind of bad for doing it Menai Menai is one of two moons orbiting the Turian homeworld of Palavan oh look at that place the Turian hierarchy put Menai in the hands of the military soon after their spacecraft first landed on the moon immediately halting civilian research and exploration Menai's geological composition and specifications have been classified ever since. These days, a few active naval bases dot the moonscape, as well as infantry installations focused on extreme survival training. The mystery of Menai is a lasting fascination for many Turian citizens. Speculation about its presumably rare and valuable resources has become a common plot point in vids, novels, and even poetry for young Turians. Interesting. And we're going to Palavin, right? When the Turians were introduced to the galactic community, an Asari diplomat poetically described their homeworld Palavin as a silver world of fortresses and fire. Mm. Because Palavin's weak magnetic field is a poor shield from its sun, most of the planet's animal life developed metallic carapaces as defenses against solar radiation. Its photosynthetic life is similarly impressive shutting down vulnerable metabolic processes during daylight hours and repairing cellular damage at night. Wow. The visible fortifications of Turian cities reflect their martial society. But since joining the galactic community, internal conflicts have become honor-bound affairs with few casualties among non-combatants. These city fortifications have proven no match for the Reapers and their aggressive bombardment of Palavan. Okay. The, Reaper. the Citadel races have classified the known variants of Reapers into four types. Oh, yeah. Capital ships are sovereign class Reapers two kilometers in length. They typically target the dreadnoughts, defense installations, and industrial cities of organic civilizations. Experts believe the Reapers harvest a single species of organics during each cycle of extinction to create these massive ships. 
some capital ships are capable of launching small drones equivalent to fighters. Destroyers are 160 meters long and in astounding numbers make up the bulk of the Reaper fleet. They engage cruisers and other smaller ships, as well as communications posts and enemy command centers. Research suggests destroyers are created from those species that are not harvested to make capital ships. Troop transports carry husks to unconquered planets and bring victims of the harvest to Reaper processing centers. They vary in length from 200 meters to one kilometer, but unlike capital ships and destroyers, do not appear to be self-aware. Instead, other Reapers operate troop transports remotely. Processors, also called slaughter ships, are mobile centers for mass DNA harvesting. Like troop transports, processors appear to be remotely operated by sapient Reapers. Wow. Interesting. Because I remember when that one Reaper ship back on Earth killed that boy um, that was getting into the escape vessel and it looked so much different than the other sovereign ships we have ever seen or i guess they're not i need to stop saying sovereign that was just sarin ship but yeah they looked wildly different and there's definitely different kinds i also wonder what that one thing was that had like wings that flew past us and anderson was like what was that <laughs> i want to know what that was i don't think we've talked about it yet the fall of Tatris. The Reaper's first attack on Turian space followed an age or age old maxim, hit them where it hurts. A populous colony dating back centuries, Tetris was already embedded in the Turian psyche as the site of the world terrorist attack in Turian history. Oh, the worst terrorist attack, jeez. Wounds were still raw from the Valum blast in which a separate, separatist revolutionary slammed a starship into the colony's capital, killing more than 100,000 Turians. Hierarchy forces responded with a massive invasion of the planet to stamp out the separatist movement. It was a cathar catharsis for the Turians, reassuring them that the heroes would always triumph over evil. And so the Reaper struck Tatris first. By the time Tatris went dark, the Turians had already learned that the Batarians and humans were under attack. The Hierarchy responded with what they believed was overwhelming force, only to walk into a trap. Reaper ships were waiting on the other side of the relay to Tatris, and they released devastating firepower the moment the fleet emerged. Turian leaders observing the one-sided battle were faced with a choice. Reinforce their side of the relay to defend against a Reaper invasion, or throw more resources into an offense. With soldiers and civilians alike clamoring for retribution against the Reapers, the Turians continued the assaults. The hierarchy sent warp bombs through the relay to clear a path fighting tooth and tail in to inflict casualties against the Reaper's fleet. It was a valiant effort, but doomed. The Reapers emerged victorious from the relay and began broadcasting a single signal to Turian convoys. Images of Valum, Tetris's capital, once again a smoking wreck. The fight for Turian space had begun. It's so sad. Um, Reaper capabilities. The Reapers are technologically superior to organic species of the galaxy, but the degree of that superiority is a matter of debate in the intelligence community. The Reapers thrusters and FTL drives appear to propel them at more than twice the speed of Citadel ships. Estimates of their location in dark space suggest that they can travel nearly 30 light years in a 24 hour period. Reaper power sources seem to violate known physical laws. Reapers usually destroy fuel infrastructures rather than attempting to capture it intact, indicating that Reapers do not require organic species' energy supplies. Consequently, the Reapers attack without regard for maintaining supply lines behind them, except to move husks from one planet to the next. Unlike Citadel ships, Reapers do not appear to discharge static buildup from their drive cores, although they sometimes appear wreathed, uh, wreathed maybe, in static discharge when they land on planets. The main gun on a Reaper capital ship dwarfs all of that of the Alliance's Everest-class dreadnoughts. No dreadnought has yet survived a direct hit from the weapon. Except our Normandy did. I mean, kinda. It, like, scratched the surface a bit um, when we went through the Omega-4 relay, and it, we got hit with it again, and it did, like, destroy some stuff. And those, like, crazy... 
I forget what they're called already. We just went over it. But the little like circle things, they just like bombarded straight into our cargo hold and just broke the barriers immediately. Precise targeting computers and correctors also give Reaper weapons a longer efficient range than organic dreadnoughts or cruisers. The kinetic barriers on a Reaper capital ship can shrug off the firepower of a small fleet. Weapons specifically designed to overcome shields such, such as the Javelin, Guardian Lasers, or the Thanic series can bypass the barriers to some degree. The difficulty is getting close enough to use them. The surface-mounted weaponry on Reaper ships, similar in principle to Guardian, present an effective defense against organic species fighters, which is what we had on the Normandy uh, 2.0. Wow, okay. So let's see if we can talk to Odina a little bit more. The Council. All I can think is that the more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah. I've always loathed that phrase, fatalism. Not what men and women should aspire to. If we don't figure out something, maybe later will be an epitaph on a mass grave of 11 billion. I know what I'm gonna do. What are you gonna do? Humanity is as feared as we are loved. Hopefully that works in our favor now. I'll try to get financial aid from as many worlds as I can. Maybe manpower, a few armed ships. I'll institute a draft in our colonies and order all civilian ships armed. Work on the Prothean device will be around the clock. Any news from Earth? There is constant news. All of it bad. The Reapers are destroying satellites and the old nuclear missile silos, along with everything else that could help. We have a handful of quantum entanglers spread out over the continents. All other communication is cut. Jeez. I feel like without the help from anybody else, Earth will fall. I just have a really, really bad feeling that we're going to lose Earth. I mean, we're sitting here twiddling our thumbs. I have to go rescue somebody in order to get help like we don't have time for this it's happening now i just mm. what's your read on the counselors any angles i could pursue counselor irissa is not like her predecessor she is colder if she has her hand on your throat she will squeeze a shield there you might find some traction practical she might make machiavelli turn pale but that's a delatrace for you frankly it's good quentia spoke with you his home world is in the most trouble, and he's looking for a way out. That speaks opportunity. You're a Citadel counselor. Don't you have options when the others block you like this? With Parliament destroyed and Shastri gone, I have more power than any human in history. But today, you saw how little that is. Rest assured, I will not be counted out long. I know I can move mountains. Do not lose sight of that, because the task before us is moving planets. Anderson would be proud, so long as you deliver. You think you can do that? You need a carrot or a stick to drive a mule, and humanity has neither right now. Our armada is tied down fighting or fleeing, and with Earth's calm buoys gone, our economy is reduced to an IOU. But leave that part to me. I will lean on our colonies for all their worth, and I can broker enough trade to repair and resupply Hackett's fleet. Yeah, when he was talking about the council leverage, um, that, that was Anderson's issue, too. No matter how much power he had, it wasn't real. It wasn't real power. Not if the other counselors don't agree. Did you know a lot of people on Earth? Many. It's monstrous to think of them being snuffed out, of course, but the part that gets me is Arcturus. I must know... I must have known most of the Alliance Parliament on a first-name basis. I required a second VI just to track all their birthdays and anniversaries. Rose Garden stuff, but to have it all gone. Mm. Yeah, it's terrible. I should go. I'll be here. All right. Wow, we have so many Codex updates. It's kind of crazy. Oh, it's beautiful out here. This is really nice. Um, we already read those ones in the Codex update. I think they're still updating. <laughs> yeah, we've read all of them already, actually. All right, so... Oh, I can go in here now?
What is this place? Spectre terminal? Spectre restrictions. What is this? Welcome to the Spectre Information Processing Center. This terminal offers secure information access and support for authorization of covert operations or requisitions. It is restricted to operatives currently on active duty with special tactics and reconnaissance. Any operation requiring payment can be executed at the terminal nearby, which supports secure and untraceable finance transactions. Quarian Fleet Intel. Quarian Pilgrim Jen Volin, Nar Nima, on the Citadel received a large credit transfer from the fleet. Jen Volin purchased tech, including high-end weapon mounts and kinetic barrier emitters, from several ship service centers. On Ilium, another Quarian Pilgrim unidentified was observed searching for a ship traveling close to the Perseus Vale. The Pilgrim was later heard saying that his pilgrimage was recalled. Data suggests that Quarian Fleet is withdrawing its pilgrims and upgrading ships for combat somewhere near the Perseus Vale. They're getting ready for war. This could be a reaction to the Reaper invasion, but no former offer or request for assistance has come. Intel suggests the Quarian may instead be preparing for conflict with Geth. So they're doing it. They're gonna go to war with the Geth. Super disappointing to hear. <gasps> Look, it's the Black Widow. Ooh, so this is where I can buy all of these. How much is the 125k? Holy. And we have some N7 Defender armor. All right, so this is where we come to buy some like pretty nice stuff when we have money. It's a lot of money for the widow. It's also kind of silly that I picked up the widow in ME2 and they're like, nope, you gotta pay for it now. <laughs> a shooting range? What's this? Wow, this is cool. So we can use any gun? Oh, wow, look at that. And there's like ammo and stuff set out here. Target distance. Oh, this is cool. Oh, there's like shields and stuff. Cool. Pretty cool. Ooh, weapon bench. Okay, I did want to look at this. So I saw that my weight is like maximum and my power recharge speed is negative 200%. So I'm guessing that I need to take some guns off of me. Um, I am going to take the shotgun off because I don't use shotgun pretty much ever. Pistol, submachine gun, and my sniper rifle. I think that's what I'm going to keep for now. We can't make any other... Oh, yeah, we... Don't we have, like, a scope for this or something? Ooh, yeah, we have an extended barrel. Increases damage by 15%. Nice. And we have a biometric sensor and auto-targeting software. Adjust to user's pulse and breath rate. Aim. Assisting aim. Wow. Very nice. Okay, cool. And look, our power recharge speed. So that is in very important to keep the weight down. Um, negative 200% is awful. <laughs> so no wonder why um, I was struggling a little bit with some of the combat the first time we were playing. I think I'm just going to kind of run with the S uh, SMG pistol and my sniper rifle. I think that will be perfectly fine for us. It's very cool how we can buy, like, upgrade, or we could find upgrades and upgrade our stuff. It's really cool. Okay, let's go see if we can talk to Bailey about what we just talked about with Udina. I'm up to my neck in trouble, but if there's anything you need, I'll do my damnedest to help. Trouble? <laughs> Thought things were relatively quiet here. Well, compared to where you're coming from, sure. 
But the war is being felt everywhere. Millions across the galaxy have been displaced, and most of them come here. Must have you doing somersaults. <laughs> yeah, already allocated the bulk of my men to customs, but we're still overtaxed, cataloging and processing them all. Jeez. Is the Citadel gearing up for war? Uh, there's a false sense of security here. Even people from worlds that have gone down act like they're safe. Well, I guess it's not just human nature. We all lie to ourselves to deal with horror. Yeah, every day. Every single day. Anything important going on around here? <laughs> you kidding? With the Reapers running roughshod through the galaxy, it seemed like the Council is in constant session. We got more ambassadors and dignitaries here than ever before pleading their cases. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, really. It was Udina who made you a commander, huh? Yeah, he's become an even bigger shot around here. Got a lot of ambition. He suspected Executor Palin was conspiring against the Council and had me investigate. Find anything incriminating? Yeah, enough to arrest him. When Palin resisted, I was forced to kill him. Wow. Udina rewarded me with the promotion. And near as I can tell, being a commander just means I'm putting out different fires. Yeah. That's crazy. You got loved ones out there? Somewhere. Ex-wife I lost track of, and... And a son and daughter. They're still on Earth. I'm sorry, Bailey. Yeah, I'm just like everyone else. I'm losing myself and things I can control. And at the moment, that means creating the illusion of security here. Yeah, and I really hope that his son isn't the one that we ran into. I mean, I feel like anyone on Earth right now is just in trouble. I don't think that Earth is going to make it. Not with us, just... Not responding. Oh man, that's so sad. We both have jobs to do, Bailey. I suggest we do them. Yep. Good talking to you, Shepard. Poor Bailey. He loves his his kids. When we were doing Thane's mission in ME2, like he was constantly talking about how he wished that he could have been a better father and we read through some of his stuff in the Shadow Broker. His messages from his wife and to his wife talking about the kids and... Gosh, it's really sad. All right, so... I'm not sure where... Commander Shepard! Oh, Jesus. Commander, the people of the Alliance have questions. Maybe that's not the one that we put... we punched. She has the same haircut. Commander Shepard, Kalisa bent seen in Al Jelani. Isn't it true that you were on Earth when the Reapers attacked? <clears throat> How do you justify running away while millions of people on Earth die? Can I die? punch her Is again? That the best <gasps> can... I've had enough of your tabloid journalism. <gasps> ha! You want... <gasps> oh! Oh You're my angry. god! I get that. <laughs> but I came here to get help for Earth. <gasps> not answer your questions. Stay down. Stop. Stop. I'm pretty sure that's the same lady that we punched in. I have to go back and look and see if it's the same lady. But I'm pretty sure it is. And she dodged us this time. <laughs> oh my god. This low, like, fall in the screeching against the glass. That was awesome. Welcome, Commander Shepard. One moment. Still just talking trash to us, trying to spin our story to make it sound now worse than it is. Alright, so I think maybe we just head back to the Normandy, right? I don't know if there's anything more for us to do here at the Citadel right now. Maybe we can walk around the Normandy and <gasps> maybe our crew's on there? Please be on there. What's this? Is this a nightmare? Is 
It's the little boy. Oh my god, this is so sad. Stop. Why is this creepy? Yara, can I help you? I've been forwarding the Turian Counselor information on the Prothean device. It can't be built without Council support, but he's not budging until their Primarch is safe. I know. Are you alright? You've definitely been better. I didn't get what you'd call a good night's rest. There's more to it than that, isn't there? What's really bothering you? The galaxy is infighting. Everyone back on Earth. I mean, yeah, everyone back on Earth is just being left while we're sitting over here twiddling our thumbs. It's unfair. When the Reapers hit, I could hear people screaming in the streets below me. We left a lot of them behind. There's no way for you to save them all. But I know you're doing everything you can, and you'll get back there in time to help. I hope you're right. Don't blame yourself, Commander. Commander Shepard? I'm Specialist... Oh. Uh, I, I beg your pardon. I thought you were alone. Who is that? I was just leaving. Commander Shepard, I'm Comm Specialist Samantha Trainer with Alliance R&D. I was part of the team retrofitting the Normandy after you turned it over to the Alliance. There weren't many of us aboard when the Reapers hit. Slow down, Specialist Trainer. You're doing fine. Thank you. I worked in a lab. I never thought I'd be serving on a ship. Why don't you tell me about the retrofits? The ship's in line with Alliance regs now, and it has new, top-of-the-line, quantum entanglement communicators. In fact, Admiral Anderson had intended to use the Normandy as his mobile command center. That's no longer an option. Yes, I heard he chose to stay and fight. I in any event, I'm honored to serve under you, Commander. For as long as you need me, that is. They only sent me here to oversee the retrofits. Shepard, some of our systems require further testing, and Specialist Trainer has been extremely effective during installation. I would prefer that she remain. Got it, Edie. Oh, wait, since when does a virtual intelligence make requests? 80s in AI. Fully self-aware. Oh, I knew it. I knew Joker was lying. Jeff requested that I pretend to be a simple VI to protect myself. Oh my god. I apologize for the deception. <laughs> Thanks, ED. <laughs> and I apologize for all those times I talked about how... Mm, attractive your voice was. Anyway, shall I give you a tour? That was strange. I think you'll be impressed by the new upgrades. <laughs> what the hell? In the Whoa. CIC, you'll find the galaxy map where you can set the Normandy's destination. Why is everything red? You can also check your messages at your private terminal. The war room houses a strategic command center for mission-specific intel and war analysis. Wow, war room. That's cool. 
The shuttle bay contains an armory where you can modify your equipment between missions. Very cool. Finally, Liara has set up a lot of hardware down in the old XO office on deck three. I think she's claimed that room. <laughs> and there you are. Still the same ship as before, it just flies Alliance colors now. Speaking of which, I believe Admiral Hackett would like to speak to you at the VidCom. Very cool. We got some upgrades. What about my room? Why are there like things hanging from the ceiling? Commander. Wires. Udina updated me on your meeting with the council. Sounds like they're running scared. I understand their concerns, kinda, but they could have at least helped out Earth a little bit. Um, they could have they could have answered their plea for help. They're useless. The council's been a pain in my ass from day one. I'm <laughs> true. done with them. <laughs> then what's your plan? So true. I'm trying to get the Turian Primarch for a summit meeting with the Asari and Solarians. I'll bypass the council and appeal directly to their leadership. That's good. I like it. This is where we start laying the groundwork for our counterattack. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot to back it up right now. Then build alliances. Gather everything and everybody you can for the cause. What about the Prothean device? Find me people who can help build it. And if you can't, I'll take ships, soldiers, supplies, whatever you can get. We need to keep hitting the Reapers across every theater of war they open. Buy us time to figure out the device. Yeah. And when it's finished? Assuming it ever is, we pool all our resources. Think of it as a giant armada for delivering the device when the Reapers are most vulnerable. The stronger you can make that armada, the better the chances of punching through. What about Earth? What about Earth, sir? We'll just have to hope Anderson and what's left of the Alliance forces can hold out until we've dealt with the enemy. Mm. I understand. Good. Then make it happen, Commander. I'll be expecting regular updates on your progress. Hack it out. All right, so it looks like we got some intel. Armor mod, mod kit. So this is where... Oh, look at our ship. It's so cool. Look at all of this stuff. So this is where we have like our virtual calls and stuff. Very cool. And the war room. Wow, look at this. War assets. The people, weapons, armies, and fleets that you've accumulated are your war assets. The overall readiness of the galaxy determines how effectively these assets will perform in the final battle. This is awesome. Alliance. The system's alliance represents humanity's economic, political, and military reach throughout the galaxy. Its naval forces are led by Admiral Stephen Hackett. So look, there's like a minimum, I guess, that we need to reach before endgame. Um, very, very cool. So we have 130 Alliance Engineer Corps. Cuts roads through mountains and builds bases on asteroids. While the bulk of the AEC has active wartime duties, their brightest are helping build a device of Prothean origin recovered on Mars. Due to the staggering amounts of raw materials required, the AEC has been given unprecedented emergency funding for any Alliance resources that will not interfere with the deployment of troops. We have 103rd Marine Division. The old saying, every Marine has a rifle, man, still holds true in the Alliance. Every Marine enlistee from clerk to sniper goes through a period of infantry training. And as a result, the 103rd Marine Division is Earth's largest collection of Special Forces soldiers. Officers from notable battles such as Skillian Blitz and the First Contact War run harsh training exercises in a variety of environments, insisting that the Marines be prepared to storm any beach on any planet. This training has been useful in the Reaper War, as the 103rd can be fighting in an Arctic desert one week, crawling through jungles the next. Wow. Well, maybe that's not 130 of them. Maybe this is just like a score in strength, because this is just one guy. Admiral Mikhailovich? Mikhailovich? When the Reaper called Sovereign attacked the Citadel in 2183, Rear Admiral Boris Mikhailovich led the 63rd Scout Flotilla against it. The 63rd suffered the fewest losses of any Alliance flotilla during the Battle of the Citadel, while providing crucial support for the Flit the 5th Fleet's career, uh, carriers and dreadnoughts. The Alliance promoted Malkovich 
Mikhailovich from Rear Admiral to Admiral after the battle and tasked him with rebuilding and upgrading his ship. His combat experience with the Reapers has been invaluable in devising strategies against them. Alliance First Fleet, Third Fleet, and Fifth Fleet. I'm not going to read through those because they're very similar. Um, somehow we picked out Diana all. <laughs> So I don't know how she's bringing points to the team, but she is um, five extra strength points. Alliance News Network reporter Diana Allers has been broadcasting from the Normandy, interviewing crew members and high ranking of Alliance officers to give the galaxy an insider's view of the war. Maybe her five strength points comes from her nipples. They were <laughs> so distracting to me. <laughs> I could not stop looking at them through the her like white tank top. Um, the Alliance Frigate Normandy SR2. That's only 115. We should have more points than that. This thing is a beast. When the original SSV Normandy was destroyed, Cerberus rebuilt the ship from stolen Alliance plans. Dubbed the SR2, the Alliance took the new Normandy apart and refitted some of its systems with new technology of its own. As a result, the SR2 Normandy is the highest performing frigate in the entire Alliance Navy, and possibly the fastest ship in its class. The Normandy is commanded by Shepard, an Alliance officer and humanity's first specter, reinstated twice. Um, so the updated parts are to bolster the Normandy's firepower, Commander Shepard installed a Thanix magnetic hydrodynamic cannon on the ship's undercarriage. Based on Reaper technology, the powerful weapon fires molten metal accelerated to a fraction of the speed of light. Before taking on collectors, Commander Shepard reinforced the Normandy's superstructure with Solaris armor a protective layer of carbon nanotube sheeting that can withstand temperatures that would instantly vaporize uh, normal conventional armor. The Normandy has also been upgraded with cyclonic barrier technology, allowing the ship's mass effect field projectors to fire rapidly oscillating barriers that deflect rather than directing absorb kinetic shocks. Very cool. And it looks like we have some mineral resources too. Uncovered significant elemental deposits while scanning planets. Okay. Awesome. So we just need to make sure that we keep getting those assets. Oh, there's someone down there. Wow, this is so cool. Look at the inside of this. I'm just like, I'm blown away. It, it looks amazing. All right, so what's over here? It's just like a meeting table or something. Wow, they completely revamped this ship. It's kind of crazy. I can't go down there. These windows are really cool. Wow, this is awesome. Oh, wait, I thought that was um, the lady from... <laughs> Never mind. I got excited because I thought it was a voice from the engineering lady um, in ME2, but I don't think it was. Commander, the Alliance has found a new Cerberus lab on Sanctum. Admiral Hackett would like you to investigate. A Cerberus lab, okay. So now we're back to fighting Cerberus, are we? Hmm, how interesting. <laughs> Commander, come to check on your new recruit. Just wanted to see how you were doing. Still trying to get my bearings. When I was working on the Normandy's upgrades, I left at the end of the day. I didn't even have a toothbrush or a change of clothing until I made some emergency purchases on the Citadel. Next time you need something, just ask. You're not alone here. Oh, it, it, it's no trouble, Commander. I'm sure you have larger concerns. We can put in a requisition order. My toothbrush is a Scission Promark IV. It uses tiny mass effect fields to break up plaque and massage the gums. It cost 6,000 credits. Okay, yeah, <laughs> you're on your own with that. In any event, I appreciate you giving me the chance to stay. Was there anything else? <laughs> that was awesome. How'd you end up in the military anyway? My family didn't have money for university. 
When the Alliance saw my aptitude scores, they offered me a full scholarship. I served my required years after graduation and decided to stay. I really like the challenges of the lab. Al although, I'm sure I'll grow to love frontline service as well. She's so nervous when talking to us. I can kind of relate though. When I'm in a new job, I'm the same way until I start to like open up um, to my boss or bosses. Um, I'm the same exact way. Kind of funny. I also love her accent, but not like a slight against trainer, but where the heck is Kelly? Where, why is she, why isn't she here? I'm surprised you're worrying about a toothbrush. We got bigger problems right now. Oh, believe me. Seeing the Reapers on Earth was terrifying, but I won't help anybody by bursting into tears here in the CIC, will I? Being here on the Normandy helps. If anyone in the galaxy can stop the Reapers, it's you. And if flagging your messages and managing strategic intel helps you in any way, then it's worth it. You worked in Alliance R&D? Yes. You'd think quantum entanglement would make communication easy, but imagine incorporating multiple incoming sources and then networking them with extrapolations of time lag data to construct a coherent situation GUI. It's an exciting challenge. Um, for me, anyway. Interesting. Where are you from originally? A colony in the Terminus systems, actually. Though I studied on Earth, at Oxford. My parents were from London. They loved Earth, but they wanted the freedom a colony life could offer. If they stayed in London, I imagine they'd be dead right now. <gasps> A lot of people back on Earth are still alive, and counting on us. Quite true, Commander. Carry on, Specialist. That's actually pretty cool. Wow, look at it. It looks the same, but it's also just, like, super red. Like, I don't know, the lighting in here is wildly different. Um, it's very interesting. And everything, the colors look different, and... I don't know. Pretty cool. I like it a lot so far. Oh, there's nothing over there anymore. <laughs> okay. And we came from over here, which was like the war room. Commander Shepard. Um, and like a weird lounge area, I guess. So let's go up and see if we can talk to Joker. Is anyone else in here? Where's Edie? I noticed that the Edie terminals are also gone. Hey, Commander. You know, I had my doubts about the Council. But after years of ignoring your warnings, they're finally willing to step up and tell you they just can't help. It's not their fault. You're surprised? <laughs> They've spent years denying the threat. You think they'd be prepared now? I was kind of hoping that maybe they were planning in secret and just not telling you about it because, you know, Cerberus. <laughs> well, let me know if you want me to get them on the channel and then hang up on them. You know, for old time's sake. <laughs> True. Joker looks like he's aged a bit. I'm sure after everything that went on with the last war that we were fighting, um, he probably had a lot of stress during that time. I mean, he was literally with his syndrome running around the ship, shooting the rifle as we were jumping. As we were jumping on board, it was kind of insane. Ooh, review messages sent to you. Hopefully this ship has a better spam filter than the last one. <laughs> Um, from Stephen Hackett, Shepard. Alliance forces are stretched thin across the galaxy. We need your specific talents for a series of ops. These missions will open door for the Alliance in places we can't touch through conventional means. We'll deploy operatives to hold point after you've completed your objectives. We need you to head to a Cerberus lab on the planet Sanctum. I'll brief you when you're inbound. Uh, this is about our reinstatement, I think. This letter formally acknowledges that you're reinstated into the Alliance Navy per Admiral David Anderson's recent verbal communication. Under Emergency War Powers Regulation 903.5, you are hereby authorized to assume command of the Normandy SR2. You are directed to begin interdiction operations against any and all enemies posing a threat to Earth, its colonies, and its allies. Furthermore, you are granted diplomatic authority to establish treaties with non-human races as required to support your mission. Admiral Hackett. Flash traffic. Alliance fleet operations. All Alliance military personnel. This is a galaxy-wide alert for all human territories. 
Fleet Admiral Hackett has declared threat condition Saber 1. Enemy presence confirmed in Soul System. Earth under Reaper attack. All Alliance military personnel are directed to evacuate Soul System at once available opportunity. Earth-based Alliance personnel unable to evacuate are directed to commence any and all necessary countermeasures. All remaining Alliance personnel outside Seoul Theater are directed to muster at pre-appointed staging areas and commence offensive combat operations. In absence of further instructions, independent action is authorized. My dog. Dear Commander Shepard, I was contractor working on Normandy's hepatic interface when it was in dry dock. Your VI ED emailed me to let me know that I left my dog mech on board. I'm all the way out in Terra Nova now and would hate for you to go a million clicks out of your way to drop off my dog. <laughs> How did his dog end up on board? Please just take care of her. She likes exploring, sniffing out chemical trails and 750 volt outlets. <laughs> Thank you and sorry for the trouble. I promise she won't be too much of a headache. <gasps> we have a dog on board. That's actually pretty cool. I want to find this dog. And an alert, new article, Corian Fleet. Citadel, where is the Corian Fleet? The latest intelligence shows that the Reapers are taking system after system at a feverish pace. Members of all races are fleeing their stations, colonies, and in some cases, their home worlds. This kind of force exodus might seem especially familiar to the nomadic Quarians, who were punished, pushed off of their home world by the synthetic Geth centuries ago. As the galaxy pushes back against the Reapers, the Quarians are conspicuously absent. Terrain Alliance spokespeople cannot provide the fleet's current location. They say that they have concerns, other concerns at the moment. Whatever they're up to, they want it secret from the Council. After a refueling stop at Ilium, the fleet left no stated destination. There are also reports of a galaxy-wide call for all young adult Quarians to abandon their pilgrimages to rejoin the fleet. Greedy and short-sighted powers will always try to gain the upper hand in times of galactic crisis. What an awful time for them to start doing this. Not only am um, mm, I, I struggle with the Corian's decision to attack the Geth after we met Legion. And I know that they're not all like Legion. Legion is very unique to himself. But the more I started reading about the Geth, even before we met Legion, when we were in there in the trial with Tally, and they were talking about peace between the Geth, and I started reading the lore behind the Geth and why the Geth war even began. It was just because the Quarians were nervous that they had become aware, and they tried to wipe them out. And in an instinct, they decided to fight back. And I just look at it so differently now that I read up about the Geth and how it started, knowing that some Quarians are not for getting rid of the Geth and that they think that there can be a peaceful resolution and then meeting Legion on top of it. I just feel like this war is wildly unnecessary and I don't think that it will un end well for them. A welcome back gift from Edie. While we were in Dry Dog, Joker suggested that a small welcoming gift would be appropriate to have on hand, should you be reinstated as commanding officer. As the ship does not have the capacity to accommodate the dancers, he suggested. <laughs> I chose something from the Official Systems Alliance catalog. Soldiers who have held an N7 designation for five or more years are entitled to a commemorative hooded jacket to wear off-duty hours. Aww. You will find it among the selection of casual clothing in your cabin. How sweet. We have to wear it. We have to. It was a gift from Edie and Joker. <laughs> um, from Glyph, you have an upgrade waiting. Some of the data you have found allowed me to research an upgrade for you. Simply access the terminal in Dr. Tussoni's office at your convenience and you may choose how and when to implement it. Have a pleasant day, Glyph. Who's Cliff? Um, and then we have a priority mission, Eden Prime, from Alliance Command. Commander, Cerberus has attacked Eden Prime and is now occupying the colony. Alliance forces are stretched too thin right now to attempt to liberate the colony, but we've been doing what we can to covertly aid the local resistance. 
In the process, we've learned that Cerberus has uncovered a major Prothean artifact. We don't know what it is, but it appears to be the reason for the attack on the colony. We need you to infiltrate the colony and recover the artifact. Holy moly. Okay, I think that's all of it. So let me look at my journal real quick. We have a lot going on. We have this uh, abyssal shrike, something about a Prothean obelisk. Apparently we heard some sort of, we were eavesdropping and found that there was a Prothean obelisk that got lost somewhere. Um, I didn't hear the rest of the conversation, but that's what it seems like. And then we have Palavin where we have to go find uh, Fedorian who could potentially help us save Earth. And we have the Cerberus Lab and the Eden Prime Priority too. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to do first. I don't think we have time to... Yeah, we definitely don't have time to do a mission today. Unfortunately, it was more of a really awesome lore-shocked episode um, that I have really enjoyed getting to like uncover some of the layers of what this game is about to be about. Um, but it was very, it was mainly us reading the codex and talking to people, which I do not mind at all. Um, I think we have a few floors on the Normandy to go check out too. So we probably won't do any of that now, but I'm, I don't know which mission I'm going to start with. Sanctum is known for the freezing ice storms, which sweep across its poles and temperature zones with only a thin strip of habitable land across the, across the equator. Uh, because of those harsh living conditions, Sanctum attracts only the most gruff and hardy, from miners to mercenaries to company men. Mining referred to as ice cracking anywhere but the equator is the backbone of Sanctum's economy. The planet is rich in platinum and palladium deposits, as well as boron, which is locally used in semiconductor doping. Sanctum's corporate factions have learned that Cerberus is involved in the planet's fi finances. Systems Alliance intelligence agents embedded within the corporate strata are quietly urging the companies to confront Cerberus directly, but so far financial bickering has kept Sanctum's major stakeholders from acting against the elusive man. Okay. Well, let's go see who else we can talk to. We've checked the console. We talked to, what is her name? Trainer. Um, we talked to Joker, we went in there. So yeah, let's see what's going on here. More room bridge, CIC. All right, here's crew deck. Did we gain a floor? <gasps> oh my God, this is beautiful. Kaden Alenko is on here. Charles Presley. Oh, this is a beautiful memorial. All right, so Dr. Chakwas should be in here because we invited her back. Maybe not. What's this? Reassign powers? Ooh, nice. Is that Dr. Chakwas? Who is that? Is that that lady that tried to murder Ashley? Why is she in our med bay? What is going on? Why do we have her on board? Um, and where is Dr. Chakwas? the actual hack. Okay. Where's our chef? Oh, it's Liara's office. <gasps> wow, I like what you did with the place. Commander Shepard. It's a pleasure to see you again. Oh my god, it's the Shadow Broker. You're the drone from the Shadow Broker's ship. 
Dr. Tassoni now refers to me as Glyph instead of Info Drone 95% oh. of the time. If you have a moment, I'd like to draw your attention to a terminal in her office. So it that... analyzes information packages. If you find any useful data, I can research upgrades for you. Mm. And what should I be looking for? I'll inform you if you found relevant data. When you do, return to this terminal for your choices. In the meantime, Dr. Tassoni would like to speak with you. Have a pleasant day. Okay. You know, I was hoping this new council would be a little more helpful than the last one. The meeting was less than ideal. I'm shocked. At least the council can't deny the Reapers exist. But I'm not sure how much comfort that is while they bicker over which portion of the galaxy to save. Wow. Becoming the big info brokers turned you into a real cynic, Liara. I like it. I'm flattered. I think. So she's converted this little area of the ship into her shadow broker lair. This is awesome. Why couldn't she have done this when we first, like be when she first became the shadow broker? I wouldn't have like left her if she would have brought her work onto the Normandy with us. I guess because it was like Cerberus run and it would probably have been a really bad precaution. We didn't really know or trust Edie at that point. So I understand it, but this is really cool. Also, are the monitors, like, following her? I feel like the monitors were facing the other way when we first came in here. Looks like you brought more than just that drone from your ship. A few things were necessary. I'd be a very silent shadow broker without data feeds. So you have access to your resources? What I can get. We'll need it to research this Prothean device. Until we understand precisely what it does, it's far too dangerous to use. Did the Protheans finish it? She said in the in the council meeting that they didn't. Did the Protheans actually complete this weapon? You mean, will it work? They wouldn't have poured their last resources into this device if they thought otherwise. But we really need to find out just what kind of weapon they left us. Yeah, we do. It'd be nice to know we're not kids playing around with a loaded gun. Absolutely. The damage it could cause if it backfired is unthinkable. Yeah. This will be difficult even for us. If something happens on a mission, if either one of us are hurt... Shepard, there's something I need to ask before we go any further. It's been years since we were together. Are you still interested in... us? Wow, that was fast. <sighs> Last episode, I was talking about how much I miss Liara and how good it is to have her here again and that my love language is quality time now that all of her shadow broker stuff is on board and being with her and near her again i am very interested in starting a relationship with her again i missed her a lot in me2 and i thought that the way that the relationship went in me2 was very awkward and it just it didn't feel right but in this moment it does feel it does feel right. I didn't forget you, Liara. I want to make us work. Good. I was getting worried. <laughs> there are a lot of reasons I was happy to see you on Mars. I'd like that list, but later. There's so much left to do. I'm working with Edie. Hopefully we can discover what the Protheans left for us. But I'm looking forward to talking about something other than business. Maybe later? Ooh, okay. <laughs> Also, the monitors are definitely following her. That's so cool. That's wild. All right, let's take a look at this intel. So we have the armor mod kit. Farron has persuaded his contacts to ship an armor mod kit to the Normandy. Technically illegal in Citadel space, the kit's Omnigel converter and manufacturing fabricator can make a one-time modification to Shepard's armor, providing shield strength or adding thermal clip compartments. Nice. So we get an ammo capacity and a shield strength bonus. Do these cost money? Except. <gasps> oh, I had to choose one or the other. Um. 
Well, shields are always a good thing, especially as an infiltrator. So maybe I would have gone with that one anyways. I need to be more careful when I press that button now. This is so nice in here. What is that device? What could that possibly be? <laughs> All right. Let's look at this computer. This terminal contains non-essential correspondence from your allied forces. Dr. Tassoni has granted you access. Cool. So, Prothean notes, 2171 to 2185. Glyph, remind me to clean up these old notes. Perhaps reviewing them will lead to something useful for the Prothean device, Liara. 2171, the University of Ceres agreed to sponsor me at the Prothean dig on Dretcherpop. Dretcherop. Very exciting. Professor Hennel is heading the expedition herself. Maybe I can even ask her for her opinion on my thesis outline. Attachment. Thesis on Prothean First Contact Protocols. 2174. I believe Dr. Uh, Joshan. Joshan was right to suggest that the Prothean artifacts we unearthed are from the Third Age, not the Fourth. What an embarrassing mistake. At least he seemed to approve of the rest of the paper. Paper on a comparison of Prothean technology to modern Asari circuit logic. 2183, I'm going on the Therum expedition. I've never thought that I'd gain permission to visit the Prothean ruins here, but the University of Ceres must have secured the funding after all. Now it's back. A paper on the end of Prothean Empire. 2183, Goddess, this human shepherd, has the key to comp comprehending the Protheans on an instinctual subconscious level. If only I could have been there with the commander, when the commander touched the beacon on Eden Prime. I'll try to learn more about this cipher on board, the Normandy. The involvement of the Reapers is troubling, to say the least. Paper on the end of the Prothean Empire with correction notes. I reviewed the old Shadow Broker's footage of the Collectors. It's chilling to know that they're just the, that they're the Prothean husks. At least nothing sentient could possibly remain after what the Reapers did to them. It makes me feel a little bit better about what I mentioned in the beginning of this episode. Um, about how the collector was like hanging on to the console that eases my mind a little bit about it, but it's still very sad what happened to them. What was the last paper on? Prothean biology. Um, message from operative fair into the broker. I made contact with Tazik yesterday. The look on his face was priceless. He's not happy you put me in charge of scouting the terminus systems, but he's doing a good job of keeping us alive. I've never seen so many pirates and mercs on edge. The black market's unreliable, and it's getting harder to make contact with suppliers. The Alliance won't be able to rely on it as a source of crucible materials for long if things get worse. Some of the other operatives think that we should cut our losses now, but I just keep asking them. When did the odds ever stop, this, stop the broker? True. Um, Farron. P.S. I hope that you got your little friend Roni to stop saying shadow and broker out loud in the same sentence to anyone in sight. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's actually really funny. Okay, I can't talk to him. Nice. So, I don't think I can tell her anything else, right? Hello again, Shepard. Ooh, I can ask her questions. How much do you know about this Prothean artifact? Very little. We're fortunate enough data survive to piece together the blueprints. Decoding them will require as many specialists as we can find. It's that high tech? I'd have killed for a glimpse of it during graduate school. It's crazy. That means that it's going to be all the harder for us to actually understand how to put it together. You brought your little helper with you? Its name is Glyph. It helped sort through all the data that led me to the archive on Mars. It was a pleasure to be of assistance, Doctor. Glyph's interfaced with the data feeds. Its analytical software should come in handy. Nice. What's been happening with you as the broker, Liara? It's been exciting. The old broker's ship? Impressive, but it was never meant to be space-worthy. Which meant the elusive man eventually tracked me down on Hagalaz. What happened? I knew he was coming. Ferran and I loaded as much of the ship's specialized hardware onto a shuttle as we could. We got away from Cerberus's ships after arranging an appropriate distraction. What was the distraction? What kind of distraction? Sending the broker's ship exploding into a Cerberus cruiser. 
I don't think the elusive man expected me to give up my resources in such a spectacular fashion. Wow. Can you still operate as the broker without the ship? Well, I couldn't let the elusive man have it. I saved what was crucial. My network of agents is intact, although the Reapers have taken a toll on their numbers. It's taking a while to reestablish contact. Yeah, what happened to Farron? So where is Farron if you two escaped? He convinced me he was recovered enough to work, and I do need more agents. Agent Farron didn't report any injuries during his last call to you, Doctor. True. Given what he survived, I should probably worry less. What have you been up to since we last saw each other? Since you helped me defeat the Shadow Broker, I started looking for defenses against the Reapers. The Protheans were the only ones with substantial information on them. The older civilizations barely had records. I knew the elusive man was hunting for the same thing when our agents began crossing paths. Like on Mars. I thought I'd covered my tracks, but he had surveillance there all along. We'll talk later, Liara. Of course. Hmm. I wonder if it's our fault that Cerberus found her because we did visit her quite a few times. Please enjoy your day. And we were working with Cerberus when we helped her become the Shadow Broker. I feel like it's our fault. I mean, Edie was literally in our ear all the, all day, every day. Where's Garrus? His rifle's here. I know that our ship was immobile, or there's a word for it, a technical word, um, because of our re our whatever dismissal. Well, there's like a book on the bed. All right, nothing in here. Women's restroom looks the same. <laughs> Samara. So empty. I guess I have to go find everyone again. I don't know. Look, we don't even have access to the men's room anymore. <laughs> we can't go in there. <laughs> That's actually really funny. Thane's not here this destiny extension oh a model cool i'm excited to see what our fish tank looks like i hope that we we were able to save all of our fish but i feel like in the cutscene, i didn't see any fish behind me which is kind of worrisome but maybe it's okay oh we can't drink alcohol in this one or close the shutters whoa a poker table Fancy. That's actually really cool. <laughs> I don't know how to play poker. I've never played poker a day in my life, but that's actually really cool. Okay, so let's go down to in engineering. Sovereign model. <gasps> the hamster! I heard him! I heard the hamster. Did you guys hear that? <gasps> what the heck? Am I hearing things? Is the hamster down here? <gasps> I heard it again! What? Hello? <gasps> I see him! I see the hamster! Pick him up! Pick him up! We found him! <laughs> What in the world? What is this, like a scavenger hunt or something? This is so weird. So now we just have a random space hamster in our pocket. What is going on? <laughs> Wait, we have to go this way. Hallie's not here. Engineer Adams. Commander, welcome back to the Normandy. Or maybe you should be saying that to me. Engineer Adams, what are you doing here? I was put in charge of the drive core retrofits. My experience on the Normandy SR-1 made me an obvious choice. So, what do you think of our SR-2? 
She's incredible. If there's one nice thing I can say about Cerberus, it's that they know how to build a ship. And about that, Cerberus, I mean. I owe you an apology. How so? Back when you got this ship, Dr. Chalk was contacting me, asking me to help with your mission against the Collectors. I refused. I didn't have your back, and I'm sorry for that. So he's from Mass Effect 1. I don't even remember him, honestly. Why did you refuse? Why didn't you join us? I saw what happened to you when the Normandy went down. I didn't trust that it was really you, and I certainly didn't trust Cerberus. Also, as an officer of the Alliance, I don't just leave my post, you know? Yeah, I guess I understand. That's Ashley's reasoning, too. As an officer of the Alliance, she couldn't leave her post. She didn't trust that it was us. Um, yeah, all the same themes that Ashley had, too. Your Alliance first. That's the way it should be. Thank you, Commander. Glad to be aboard. Is your family okay? My parents are serving on Viridian Zenith, an Alliance agricultural vessel. My sister is a navigator on the SSV Benjamin Davis. Happy to report that both vessels are safely under Hackett's command. Does the new Normandy stack up to the old SR-1? <laughs> stack up? It blows the old ship away. The Tantalus drive core has been completely overhauled. The SR-2 might be nearly twice the size, but the new drive core is three times bigger. This ship can fly. That said, Cerberus isn't too high on safety. If pushed past her limits, this core would vent into engineering. Guess it gives my team incentive to keep her well balanced during a firefight. Do your job or get vaporized. Pretty much. I noticed you upgraded the kinetic barriers with cyclonic technology. Should help reduce the draw when under missile fire. Hopefully that means fewer vaporized engineers. Yeah. The IES stealth system is significantly improved. It can handle a higher blue shift of our emissions. And that means? We should be able to drop out of FTL without triggering every sensor in range. Very handy for stealth reconnaissance. Wow, that's nice. All in all, the Normandy is a marvel of engineering. What do you think of Edie? We had a good talk during the retrofit. A little strange at first, talking shop with an AI. AI? I thought Edie posed as a VI to keep the likes of you from unplugging her. Yeah, but I saw through her. Have you seen her hardware? Processing power is off the charts. And then there were the problems that kept fixing themselves. If I hadn't had her pegged, I would have sworn I was losing it. You never expressed any skepticism, Lieutenant Adams. I figured I'd better play it safe with the Cerberus AI, Edie. No offense. None taken. As long as you keep your fingers out of my cognizance processors. <laughs> In the beginning, I tried disconnecting her from key processes without giving myself away. Easier said than done. But Joker seemed to trust her, and at time I saw her advantages. Even grew to like her. Is it just me, or does Edie seem a little bit more social? Um, also, that like pan down on Adams was a little bit creepy. Um, and her and Joker have been on like first name basis for a while now. I feel like Edie is growing um, into more and more of an actual person. It's kind of weird. But at the same time, it's very cool. At least she's on our side. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, ma'am. It's just kind of interesting how like that conversation and hearing her like tone of voice coming into the ship for the first time and meeting Edie, it was very like robotic, bleep, 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 bleep. And then now hearing her talk to everybody on board in this game, she has so much more personality in her voice. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting just picked up on a little bit of it there in that conversation. Let's go see if our favorite trash compactor is still over here. Oh, look, it's that lady. She put her bed where our trash compactor was. What the heck? That looks like that one... Uh, maybe it's just like a duplicate of the statue, but it looks like a the statue from the girl that got murdered by Samara's daughter, Morinth. It looks exactly like it. It's kind of strange. What is this wall? 
Who are these people? Are these missing people? How's your new assignment working out, Allers? Fairly normal, except for the unshackled AI, Matriarch Benezia's daughter, and the communicator that can reach Earth. The first two, I can deal with. That last one gets my attention. So what are you asking for exactly? Anything from Earth is the lead story right now. That's not opinion, it's fact. Maybe I can pass on a few non-classified progress updates. Seriously? You just doubled my ratings. I don't need FaceTime, just a data upload. Tell people what's really happening on Earth. We need long recruiting lines on every planet after you air a story. I can do this, Commander. Remind me to tell you about the time I made an Elcor cry. <laughs> I'm glad that we found her and that she's on board. I did not think that was what was going to happen out of talking to a reporter, but so far I like her. I think she's very, um, she's... She's an interesting character as well as like having her on board could mean good things for us and new stories are being reported and they're factual, which is very exciting because as we know, um, news reporters are not ever factual. So I think it's very, it's very cool that she's on board with us. Okay. So we're in engineering now and then down there we have an armory cargo hold and the shuttle. So I think this is our last place to kind of check out. Freighter model. Why are all of my model? <gasps> it's the dog! Look at him! Look at his little tail! He's a little chonky mac. I like him. Look at his cool little elbows. I wanna see his face. All right, so there's a weapon bench in here. Weapon upgrades. Ooh, nice. Um. Hmm, Mantis too. We should probably purchase that upgrade. Ooh, and the Mantis three. Let's go for that one. Um, I don't want to spend all of our money on the Mantis upgrade. So let's do. Maybe the Predator or the Shuriken. Probably the Shuriken. Okay. I'll just start with that for now. Procurement interface? What the heck is this? Serta supplies. Oh, Metagel upgrades. Oh, this is cool. So we can actually go and look at other stores this was back near the hospital on the Citadel. Whoa, look at these. Is this a sniper rifle? Oh, it's fully automatic. I wish I could look at the stats on these. A scale of the Alliance Kodiak shuttle. <laughs> All right, let's buy it. Um, A thermal clip. Sniper rifle spare thermal clip. Add sockets to increase thermal clip capacity, increasing number of spare shots. I feel like that would come in handy. Um, but I'm kind of reluctant to buy more stuff right now. Maybe sniper rifle stuff we will buy. Spectre requisitions. Oh, that's all the Spectre stuff that we can buy back on the Citadel. Okay, cool. Lieutenant Steve Cortez, shuttle pilot. Got news about our supply chains, Commander. Nice to meet you, Lieutenant. What's going on? Sorry to just jump in, Commander. There's so much to be done, I get caught up in the tasks at hand. He's always like that. You need to chill out, Esteban. So you do care, Mr. Vega? Or is that the Cerveza talking again? So what's happening with our supply chains, Lieutenant? Alliance procurement chains are in chaos, but the Citadel's economy is still running. I can network to Citadel retailers. You can view inventory and make purchases right from this console. When I network to a new store, I'll let you know. It does cost more to coordinate delivery to the Normandy, so it's cheaper to buy supplies when you're there. So, you're my shuttle pilot, but you're setting up procurement chains? 
I wasn't assigned as Normandy's pilot. Not much need for one on a dry dot ship. I was overseeing the retrofit of the cargo hold. I'm quite familiar with the operation and maintenance of the UT-47 Kodiak and the M-44 Hammerhead. In my experience, it made sense for me to take over as shuttle pilot when we left Earth. Especially given Mr. Vega's love of mid-air collisions. <laughs> to save the day, pendejo. I'm also responsible for logistics. Get the Make dog sure in the, the background. <laughs> shuttle are properly stocked and maintained. I think we should name the dog. I think we should name him Chonkers. <laughs> I feel like that's a fitting name for him. How long have you been with the Alliance? About 10 years. I enlisted in First Fleet serving on the SSV Hawking. Flying F-61 Tridents mostly. I love the Trident. It practically dances in low Atmo. I spent as much time tinkering on my bird as flying her. Got a bit of a reputation. So you can fly fighters and fix them? Yeah. And I got a knack for procurement, too. They were grooming me for CAG, but my skill set made me more valuable commanding a flight deck. They assigned me to the Normandy retrofit team about five months ago to oversee all cargo bay modifications. Okay. What happened to the M44 Hammerhead? <laughs> it was sent to the tech labs for a retrofit. To afford mobility with such a small ESO core, its design sacrificed armor plating. The lab engineers are trying to improve that. After the Reaper invasion, those labs are probably just a pile of rubble. Oh, dang. So it's gone. The Kodiak seems a bit different. Good eyes, Commander. This is the UT-47A Kodiak. It's got an upgraded ESO core and prototype stealth technology based on the Normandy design. For quick drops, I can get you in and out virtually undetected. She flies like a brick, so that's why you need a good pilot. Or some, like, good landing gear. <laughs> Do you maintain this armory? I share that duty with our illustrious Mr. Vega. Though I believe the only weapon he really cares to maintain is himself. You know you love the show, Esteban. <laughs> the first retrofit we did was to move the armory down from deck two. I'm not sure what Cerberus engineers were thinking. Now you get off the elevator, pick your gear, and head right into the shuttle. Just like the original Normandy. Welcome back to the Alliance, Commander. That's very cool. You were stationed on Earth. Do you have family there? I'm an only child. Lost my parents years ago. I had a husband back when I was stationed at Ferris Fields. The collectors took out the whole colony. That's really sad. I'd rather not talk about it. Aww. Keep up the hard work, but don't kill yourself. Yes, Commander. Wow, this is awesome. I'm really liking our crew so far. It's pretty cool. We've got some armor stuff, armor upgrades. Here's our casual wear. We should definitely change to that. Was it this hoodie? Was this the one that Edie was talking about? I feel like it's this one. We had this in Mass Effect uh, 2. <laughs> um, but we'll wear it, I guess. Okay, so these are the armor sets. Okay, so we changed some outfit stuff. <laughs> Did our upgrades. Let's take a look over here. Yeah, I think we should name him Chonkers. I think that it's a really cute name for him. It's our little robot dog. Just my baby dog. -a. Hey, Shepard. Can you stop working out and talk to me? <laughs> Same as usual. Non-committal. <laughs> staring at him. Helpful. <laughs> Bet they still wanted you to help them out, no? <clears throat> yep. We're going to rescue a Turian Primarch from Palavan. <sighs> Sounds like fun. Never been to the Turian homeworld. <sighs> you come down here for something? Or are you just looking? <sighs> I don't need a reason. I'm looking now. Does that mean I'm hitting on him? I don't want to hit on him. I can't tell if this is a flirtatious. Come down here for something or are you just looking? I'm looking now. Yeah, look at us. <laughs> Our head is like looking at him working out. I don't want to hit on him. We just got back together with Liara. It's my ship. I go where I want and talk to whoever I want. That was weird interaction. Fair enough. <sighs> Not sure what there is to talk about. You already know my service record. 
I don't, actually. I didn't have access to personnel records when we met. Right. Forgot about that. <clears throat> well... <sighs> you. Think you can dance and talk at the same time? Dance and talk at the same time. What does that even mean? Oh, I can dance. We're gonna work out together now? Okay, Lola. Let's do this. Oh, we're gonna fight? Don't let my good looks fool you, Vega. I got my share of scars. <laughs> you remind me of my old CO. Oh, yeah? And who was that? Captain Tony. He was a hard-ass son of a bitch, but a good leader. Was? Died. With most of my squad. Protecting a civilian colony from a collector attack. And the colony? It was either them... Or the intel we had on the collectors. Intel we could have used to destroy him. I chose the intel. Sorry. That's a tough call. The best part was, we didn't really need the intel in the end. Because you were out saving the galaxy by taking down the entire collector homeworld. You didn't know. You can't blame yourself, Vega. Who says I'm blaming myself? Yeah, you're blaming me? You a shrink, too? No, but that stunt back on Mars was reckless. You're lucky to be alive. So? So. Maybe you don't care if you live or die. Or maybe. <laughs> I'm just willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to end this goddamn war. <laughs> Maybe you are. But if you're half as good as I think you are, we need you alive. Thanks for the pep talk. Anytime. It's an hey. interesting interaction. Thanks for the dance, Lola. Lola? Why are you calling me Lola? Lola, huh? You kind of look like a Lola. <laughs> You're cute. So I'll let you get away with it. For now. That's it. Now you made me blush. <laughs> we were definitely hitting on him. Interesting. Fortification unlocked. Available in the med bay. Yeah, we were definitely hitting on him. That was interesting. Um, so I'm guessing he's a romanceable op for us now but we just got back together with Liara and I feel like I don't want to screw it up a second time but super <gasps> where's my fish where the heck are my fish all right everyone that's it for today thank you for joining me in another adventure in mass effect 3. i am still blown away by everything in this game i love the graphics i love the changes that they made to the normandy it is very exciting that we can start a relationship with liara again because i was really worried that i locked myself out of that by telling her that we wanted to be friends when she became the shadow broker so being able to kind of rekindle that romance today was super exciting and I am very happy to see where the relationship goes and how much we grow together. I think it's really cool that she was able to bring all of her shadow broker stuff on board the Normandy and she has like her own little Liara shadow broker cave down there. It's very cool. I love all the changes that they've made to the Normandy. I think it looks amazing. It feels like it has way more personality than it's ever had. My only question is where all of our crew members went. Seeing as how the world is kind of turned upside down, I think it's kind of weird that we haven't at least gotten a message from somebody. That is my only gripe coming into Mass Effect 3 so far. I love everything else about it. The combat, the fluidity of the movements. Next time, we will be able to embark on more combat heavy interactions i know today was very very deeply lore filled which personally i love and i think we're 
drawing some conclusions and we're picking up some pieces that we need going forward in this game. I have really enjoyed the lore so far. The codex updates have been really, really good. I love how they put different characters in there now too. I'm not sure what mission we're gonna go on next. I will probably just make a decision when I get in here next time. Unsurprisingly, today went exactly how I thought it was. The Citadel Council refused to listen to us and not really that they refused, but they just kind of put the Earth's priority very low down on their list. It's super unfortunate because Earth is struggling right now. People are dying and they're not doing anything to help. Whenever we go rescue the guy that the one counselor told us to go get, he can help us along the way. And maybe at that point, the council will change their tune and decide to actually help us or at least help out Earth a little bit. We will have to see going forward. I'm not surprised that the council reacted the way that they did knowing them in the past and knowing how they've reacted to us, Shepard, in the past, I got the answers that I thought I was going to get, which is basically better luck next time type of vibes. I think it's really interesting that coming back into Mass Effect 3, we are back on like Cerberus bad, stop Cerberus at all costs. I just think that that's very comical in a way and also super interesting. And I'm looking forward to running into the elusive man now that we have that crazy weird relationship with him now i think that the conversations between him and i are super awesome and i love every moment of them just because we have had that whole year of being with him on the normandy that he made for us in the body that he saved kind of going against him now. I am very much looking forward to the next few episodes. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lore-filled episode. Hopefully next time we can get into some more combat. But thank you so much for hanging out here today and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye everyone.